Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Devin Rex for Art here. Today I'm going to do a craft room tour. Lucy is here ready to welcome you. And we'll just do a quick pan around first. So I was just between projects, so I thought, um, I like to tidy up between projects, so I thought this would be a good time to do a craft room tour. So I'll just do a quick little pan through and then we'll go through the different sections together. So my room is not very big. Um, I think I'll measure it and I'll write down the dimensions um, on the screen here. So let's start behind the door. So here I have my um, go pack. So if I want to do some art on the go, I'll just throw some things in that little bag. And then I have some leftover Christmas things for the jelly plate and projects. Here's my napkin overflow. So if I'm doing some happy mail, I'll, um, I've already taken out a couple napkins and put them in my napkin section, but then I'll keep the leftovers here to um, throw in some happy mail. Um, here I have sort of a, like a little mail center. I have some, my address book, um, some cards, ready-made cards. And then this I just moved over here and it's much more efficient. So it's my extra um, watercolors. Um, this is actually empty. I've consolidated um, all my Jane Davenport watercolors. I'll show you that later. Um, here's some gouache and some tools, some oil pastels, um, some extra old acrylic paints and some sketching things. Um, what do we have down here? Some sponges, and brushes, uh, flowers. I don't use those a lot, but um, let's see. Fibers and floss. I try to keep um, like with light. Here's some Christmas things, tags, journaling, ribbons and stamps. Um, and then I have some of my um, spray things there that I'll take out to the garage to spray things as a drying rack. Um, here's some magazines and stuff for glue booking. And then up here we have my Halloween journal and ephemera. And let's go back to this armoire here. So this is an armoire we had, um, we've had for a while. It was sort of in the baby's room, but my babies are grown men now so they don't need it um, so here I have most of my stamps so I collect mostly stamping up stamps if it has a green heart it means there's some dyes associated with it um, some of the stamps I've combined so for example like here I've written down more stamps that I've added to that case and I stamp them on the back and there's the front. And these I have alphabetical and I have a binder that catalogs my stamps. The binder's not cataloged alphabetically, but I store them alphabetically here um, to about here. So it starts A and then ends with uh, W. And then I have alphabet stamps. This is actually in the wrong spot. This should be here. And then I have some alphabet and number stamps. And then I have a section here that I labeled background and textures. So these are stamps that I'll pull out um, just to do textures and, and things, some stitches, um, some scripting. And here too, I'll double up. So I'll add extra stamps to this package and I, I'll just kind of write it in. Uh, these are some miscellaneous stamps and in my binder that I have cataloged, I will have um, where to find these stamps. So for example, here's um, this set from Jane Davenport and um, in my binder, I'll have this stamped out and I'll say where to find it. Um, this is mostly uh, labels and some older stamps that I don't really use all that much. And then some more alphabet stamps here. And then here I slid in my um, scoring, what do you call it, scoring board, scoreboard. Um, here I still do a bit of scrapbooking. Um, I've moved a lot of that to another room, like my albums and stuff, but um, this is a nice place to store my page protectors for that. 
And then here's a stamp carving section. So I've got a bunch of blocks ready to go and then my stamp carving um, stuff's in there. Here I have a bunch of 12 by 12 scrapbooking paper. And it's mostly by type of paper. So here I have like paper pads that are patterned. Here this is just solid um, cardstock by color. Here's more like neutrals, vellums, black and white. Um, and I do have a little bit of it labeled. So miscellaneous patterned and here I have it by sort of theme. And then these are more um, coordinating kits. So we have like some stamping up uh, papers and other miscellaneous ones. And then some more, um, these are more seasonal, like some Christmas papers and then sports, travel, etc. And then on the side here, I have other papers, um, sort of more art papers, like bigger pads, watercolor paper, sketching paper, Yupo paper, um, tone tan paper, black paper, gray paper, all sorts of paper there. I'll close that up and I'm going to open up this drawer. So in this drawer, I've, um, I used to have a bunch of junk, so I cleaned it out and I just have some more envelopes, some empty pencil cases. And this one might have a stash of chocolate. some foil tape. Um, this is my apparatus. So if I'm making cards, I can easily pull it out and it's, I've got a few different ways to use it. So again, that's a Stampin' Up product. I have a friend that sells Stampin' Up, so I do like to support her and I do like their products. Uh, when you're Canadian, it's kind of a nice way to get things. And then we have some index cards and tags. Drawer. Some stuff for collage. So I have different magazines, um, some books, some National Geographic, um, some calendars, some other books, just some various things for collage. And then I needed more space to go vertical. So one thing is I have this awesome Calyx unit that's square. However, these types of um, storage containers that you get at Michael's for, uh, they're great for uh, 12 by 12 um, items. They don't fit in this. So initially I bought this um, unit and I had things stored horizontally, but then I, you know, to get something out of the bottom was such a hassle. So I sort of switched out how I had everything. Put my shelves around so that I could store those 12 by 12 containers um, vertically. So if I want to grab something out, it's just easy. So assorted collage papers, for example, I can just pull it out and look, um, just look for what I want. So I have some napkins and those are those either napkins that somebody sent me or, um, you know, just a few napkins from my stash. Uh, tissues and rice papers, steampunk stuff, assorted collage papers, vintage -y papers, um, fabrics and fibers, ribbons, dominoes, flashcards, um, chipboard, and then I have my Tim Holtz um, people in this little, um, little box. And then down here I have some stickers that's more for scrapbooking and what's that called? Photo protectors. And then here I have a box full of paint pouring supplies that I still haven't tried. And then going up I have these sort of project trays. Um, this is for my scavenger hunt that I, you know, I didn't finish on time, but I'm still gonna work on it. Um, so I have a bunch of things collected here for an Asian journal that I wanna work on. Um, this is for my dream journal. And then the bottom is some other Stamperia paper that I have some ideas for. This is a uh, tray of some cards that I need to make that I have um, my, my friend that sells um, Stamping Up, I'll link her below. She uh, does a card club, so she sends us some cards, uh, 
with stuff ready, ready cut to do. And she does a little video on it. Here I have some other card supplies. So this section up top here is journals I haven't started yet. So um, Shelly Allred sent me these cool little composition books. And then I bought this in the States. Um, it's just a planner, which I'm not using to plan. I'm using it for collage fodder. And then some old um, containers of eyelets and buttons. And this one is brads and clips. And then behind there, I have some puzzles that I bought from the dollar store that I used recently in a few projects. So this just kind of all goes back here. And like I said, the top is mostly empty journals that I have, um, you know, if I want to start a new project, I can go here. Some are from the thrift store, like this one here is kind of cool. It's like ledger paper. And so lots of ideas. And then I have, um, some coffee table books that I use for collage that are quite large, like tall. So this is a good spot for them. I have more collage fodder here. So this is, I've got organized by category. So let's say I want um, some birds to put on something. I can pull out my bird folder and I'll have a bunch of birds here. So um, I don't always go directly here, but if I have something in mind, I'll look here first. So this is a bunch of people or image transfer um, candidates. Um, here's some big cards that um, Trudy Gaga Toots sent me. And there's a calligraphy that Dee Dee Wilhelm made for me. So there's just an example of my categories. So do categories, you know, if you want to organize a few things. I don't put everything in here, like I said, but I have a few in there. And then I have some other things I use for collage, like this um, atlas. Has some nice colorful paper for collage. I have this clip art book that I found at the um, secondhand store, and I use that quite a bit. A sticker book I got from Walmart. So that's fun, especially for like Happy Mail or if I'm looking for random stickers. And then my ooh, extraordinary things to cut and collage book. I use that a lot. And then some other calendars that I've got from the um, different places that I like to use. And then this is a magazine I got from the a secondhand store, but it's so big. This is the only place it really fits. And then I have this little drawer organizer. So I have um, some ready made little tidbits um, that I can, if I'm looking for something. And these are some Sumonagashi marble papers that I made and to restock re that. Um, some various painty papers, um, mostly not jelly plated, a few are, but mostly um, just kind of, these are all just kind of thrown in there, just leftover bits of papers, Here's some more uh, marbling. And then I have, this is actually a rolling cart, but I never roll it anywhere. Um, this, I need to go through it. It's just kind of odds and ends, leftover bits. So someday I'll get through that. And then here I have mostly um, jelly prints. So I have a lot of my botanical prints on the top here. And then I have uh, image transfers. And then I have it separated into sort of pinks and purples. So if I'm doing a collage and I'm looking for a specific color to use, I'll go in here. Every now and then I go through and I reorganize it. And then these are blue and green and mostly jelly prints. And the bottom, the label fell off, but they're mostly like yellows and reds and um, some neutrals. So that's how I store a lot of my um, single sheet collage papers. And then we have this um, Calyx unit, but in front of it, I have these rolling carts. This is my newest edition. This was from uh, Michael's. And it does extend here. Pull up this um, metal piece and it extends there. So, you know, especially if I'm 
pulling something out, I can put it there and then look through and then I can put it back. So it's kind of handy to have it over here. And then what I've decided to do is to, excuse the noise, um, put my stencil binder on top of it. Um, so I just recently put all my stencils sort of in a somewhat of an order into this big binder. And then I have the larger stencils over here, so they're close at hand. And this is sort of what I'm calling my deli print cart. So here I have various um, things by theme. So I'm just gonna pull out the stool just to show you how I organize some of my jelly plating things. So I've got various textures at the front and then I have organized kind of by season. So these are kind of flowery summer things. Um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, this I need to put at the front because I haven't used it yet. Um, hearts and February, here's more fall things and just some other things. So sometimes when I'm jelly printing, I'll put this on this little rolly stool and I'll put it behind my chair so I just can rotate around and look through with what I what I want. Um, getting back to this here, I have a tray that has different um, papers I might use in my next jelly plating session. And then here's all my placemats that I like to use. So those are handy. And then this drawer, I have my jelly plates, uh, five by seven, my little four inch round, and then my eight by 10. I recently started storing in this plastic case my brayers, um, my art foamy stamps that I just got. Um, this I put some um, alphabet stamps and then I have my cases for my jelly plates and then this is a jelly plate which is a speedball jelly plate which does not work with acrylic paint very well so I don't really recommend it. And this cart's so new that I don't have those filled up. So this actually pulls away so if I'm, you know, if I want to use this for like a drying space or for something else, I can easily put this binder back on the shelf right there. It fits there. So for now, I'm just going to roll it totally out of the way. This is my acrylic paint cart, which is very handy to have nearby. So I have the craft paints at the top. Um, these are more metallics and shiny paints. My Arteza paints are back there, the shiny ones. Um, Jane Davenport and Dilutions paints. Uh, this is a tub I have with some Liquitex Basics. And then I have another section here that has some Molt Mart, uh, quite a selection of colors. And then some other specialty paints, um, like my wax, antique waxing, uh, brown and clear. So those I keep close by. And again, I can just roll them out of the way. So now we're gonna go through this um, unit. So on the top, I just keep um, things either I've done or people have sent to me, like um, the portrait of Lucy that Dee Dee Willingham made for me. Uh, another collage from Dee Dee. This is actually a cool collage from, I think it's from Jane Litterick. And then a bunch of Dee Dee Happy Mail things in there. Someday I'll frame some of those. So let's start on this side here. So I have my unused journals over there. So here I have journals in progress. Um, so a lot of different journals in progress. My file folders, which are from last year that I have to finish up. Different things in progress. This is um, finished journals. So these are all completed journals. And down here I have some art books, um, paper protectors, and some other unused journals. Let's go start down here. Um, some other cleaning solutions, sort of things for heat, like my little iron, um, my glue, my hot glue gun, which is a mini gun, a little mat, a hammer. These are things I don't reach for that often. Ring punch, so it's a, a big punch that you use with these rings. And then here I have my color book collection. I just bought three more, no, maybe four more color books. So I'm trying to just kind of slow that down and I'm going to really try to 
color in the books I have because I have enough books to color in, but it's so hard when you see these pretty new books. Um, these are a uh, case with my Prismacolors and I've swatched out the colors there. I also have it organized in sort of a tritone system that I saw Coloring Bliss do. So I have um, sort of a color wheel here that has the colors used and then some additional colored pencils that I have. Um, so then they kind of go in rainbow order. So I have like um, some oranges, some pinks, some violets, it goes to blues and then to green. Crayola uh, Colors of the World, I think they're called. And I have those organized by um, their three different types, almond, golden, rose um, and then I have um, also my all my neutrals swatched out here so I can use this as my swatch or I can use um, these little tags that I made if I'm looking for a specific color. In my coloring book collection I also have um, sort of Christmas dollar store, nicer books, coloring haven, um, specialty books and then I have this binder that I put in my um, PDFs of things I've colored. And then we have um, my pan pastel section here. And then because I bought more coloring books, I had to move these extra crayons up here. So I have my soft tools and then my pan pastels and that dollar store makeup I bought for one of my videos. And then I have just some assorted punches on this tray that I can pull out. These are more specialty punches. And then beside it, I have more um, like squares, circles. Here I have some extra coloring supplies. And I also have um, like a blender pen I haven't used. And I did buy a little wax seal thing that I haven't tried yet. And then here's my Sumigashi supplies. Um, so I've got my Sumi brushes, the inks in there. And these are cool boxes I found. Uh, this mold, this is the only mold I have. So I just kind of put it there. Here I have um, dip pens, um, some fountain pens here, which I don't use that often, so I'm, I've moved them over to this section. And then just some decorative things, some instant coffee for coffee dyeing, some collage tissue paper, um, some tea bags, some shaving cream for uh, doing more marbling, um, some baby oil, which is handy for um, cleaning my jelly plate. And I have my Boot Fruner 160 set here because it's pretty close to the coloring. I couldn't really get it closer. Um, I recently ordered uh, the 50 set of the Boot Fruner Macaron pencils, so I'm not sure where those are going to get stored. And that's the thing is I try to say, no, I'm not buying anymore. I have enough stuff, but... You know, you get enabled by people. Here I have some miscellaneous things like um, tie-dye stuff, some chopsticks, tongue depressors, uh, some Sumi ink, um, some cyanotype powder I want to use, and you can use hydrogen peroxide um, when you're doing uh, cyanotype. So I'm going to do that in the spring. Look for a video on that. Here's some sprays I have. I don't have every color of every brand, but I like to have a little assortment. Um, so I have my Seth After sprays. Oh, there's that acetate cards I was looking for. See, when you don't put things like with like, you can't find them. So I had to find a different spot for that. And then these are um, Delusions and Distress sprays. Here I have Distress Oxide sprays and Stina Wakely uh, gloss sprays, which I really like, but I don't like that they don't stay um, open. They, they clog up so I end up taking the lid off and just kind of dumping it or drizzling it all right so let's continue we did my punches and then this is some ink so Bombay inks and then this little ice cube tree I use as a palette and I also use these kombucha lids as a palette um, these are more um, water soluble inks some cartridges for my fountain pens. Here I have a few glittery things. So I have my Genia K Glitz gels. I just have these three colors. Here I have stickles. 
my glossy accents. I don't have every color. Um, I have some basic colors, but I do find like just the plain color over a colored pencil will give you, um, you know, whatever colors you need. I have gold, blue, green, red. I try to buy, like if I'm getting a new supply, I try to buy sort of like the colors of the rainbow, unless it's very specific. Like these, I just did some Halloween colors and then a blue. And then here we have some uh, mixed media items. So gesso, um, glazes, gel mediums, crackle mediums, modeling paste, um, some hand sanitizer. Um, and then in this jar, I have some modeling material for the molds, um, some embellishment moots, icing paste, sort of more specialty items in this one, um, some watercolor ground. And then we have this catch-all here. It has some extra scissors, a little dryer, a light box, some shrinky dinks, some cards, paper bags. So empty containers like fine liner, like liners. And yeah, I need to use that stuff. Next one we have um, some photo paper, some um, envelopes you can use for storing things. Uh, this is a binder that I put a lot of my printables in. Some printables I just leave stored on my computer and print them out as needed, but some I'll print out right away, like my Robin McClendon printables, um, my Kathy Arbor printables, um, assorted papers, cardstock, um, copy paper, black paper, craft paper, um, watercolor paper, which I already talked about the stencils. Um, this is my stamp catalog, which I'm gonna pull out and I'll show you that when I get to my dye machine. So these are larger stencils, like the 12 by 12 or bigger stencils. And um, this is my Society of Idea Collectors book where I keep um, ideas and lists and things. Um, here I have my alcohol inks. I have two containers full now. Um, I have other things I use with alcohol inks here, including a swatch card, which I have to make a new one because I have more now. And then in here, this is just things I use with uh, alcohol inks, like blender solutions, this little pump thing, which I haven't used yet. Right beside me is a uh, catch-all. I have like palettes um, and wax paper, just paper I can use to um, protect my journals or whatever. Um, here I have, it's pretty well labeled, stamp accessories and archival inks and metallics. I have more archival inks over there. I'm going to show you in a minute. My Distress Oxides and some pigments inks, blue green inks, pink and purple inks, red and orange pinks. Um, here I have embossing powders. This is if I want to do some embossing, I can just take this whole tray out and bring it to my desk and then use it and then put it back, which is very handy. Glitter and leafing foils, metal accents, and some metal um, working tools. I try to have, like, I like having a little bit of everything. I don't have everything, like, I don't have complete sets of things, but I like to have little options. Here's my jewels I put in a uh, Halloween case. And then little jewel stickers. And then just wood embellishments, mostly from the dollar store. And then here I have more papers uh, for the jelly plating. Rolls of paper. This is kind of an awkward area, so I'll have um, like backgrounds for photos or um, my videos. Here I have a, um, oh, I have my heat gun in this um, silicone holder, which is very handy. I have a plug-in here. I left my iPad here because I often will watch videos while I'm arting. Jane Davenport stuff, her mermaid markers. These are mostly gel pens uh, and metallic pens I use a lot. Pencils. Oh, this isn't too boring. I like watching um, organizing. <laughs> videos. Here I put um, stuff that I'm cataloging. So I'll show you. I'm going to move that over to the um, other section there. We'll show you that in a minute. 
If I have leftover pieces, I'll put them up here. These are a lot of my um, water-soluble things. So I'll have um, my Neo2s, my Intense pencils, my, what are these, Graphitint pencils, watercolor pencils, and then I'll have different palettes um, and more my pit pens and permanent markers that are black, my fine um, pens for Zen tangling. These are my Paul Rubens uh, shimmer paints. This is a studio light set. So I'll include a swatch in my palette, but I'll show you in a minute. I also have uh, separate swatches. Put all my Jane Davenport paints into this one case here. So I use the empty tins for other things. So this is used to be Jane Davenport palette, but now it's my Paul Rubin um, Opera Neon. This is one of my favorite palettes, and it came in tubes. So I do have the tubes in that other um, drawer system. When these run out, I can fill them up. I think Lena enabled me with that. This is something that I bought um, watching Lindsay Frugal Crafter. And then this is my palette that I'll pull out when I'm doing watercolor. It's just a ceramic dish from the dollar store. And then here I have all the Daniel Smith watercolors with room for expansion. So I made a little shelf within a shelf here to hold these things separately. I have my gold uh, fine tech paint. And then I do have this other palette, Intense uh, Paint Pan. The reason I bought this is because the white here is opaque and I really uh, find that palette fun. Here I have more um, things for watercolor, uh, some granulation mediums, some salt, some magic erasers. I bought a new um, masking fluid pen because my old masking fluid went bad. Um, so here I'm going to show you, I did make a swatch um, sample, sample swatches of a lot of my different um, sets of things. So if I'm looking for a color, and it's mostly up to date, it's sit down here so you get my point of view. So on my desk, I have things within reach that I use a lot. So I have my glues, um, glue sticks, and I'm use tacky glue, uh, water spray bottles, an alcohol spray bottle my little blender um, handles, and then different um, permanent pens, some of my favorite scissors, and uh, these blending sticks, more glue, oh, I forgot about that, my Wink Stella, scissors, hole punch, bone folders, you know, just stuff I use a lot. And then here I recently bought uh, that new a few more archival inks, so I just keep them on my desk candy, so I have a variety of colors. Like I said, I don't have every color in every different set, but I do like to have a variety of colors, so those are on hand. I have a few distress stains, just two. Um, a few little mini alphabet stamps. And then here's my distress inks, so I have the inks here. Um, and then the Distress Oxide inks in my other little storage thing. Here I have my little handy dandy uh, holder for my phone when I'm filming my videos. I have some different sharpeners. Here's a cute little bunny bowl that I just put in just some cheap stamps from Michaels. These are just little cute little animals. A box with some of my, I don't know if you can read that, mini journals. Just some different fun keepsakes. Here I have uh, mostly black things and a few Stabilo pencils, so black pens. And um, oh, there's that ruler. And some Stabilo pencils for shading. Um, these are my watercolor brushes here. And then I have my acrylic brushes here. And then I also have the acrylic brush set here that I use when I'm doing paint alongs with Kathy Arbor. And that medium that I have in like a dish soap dispenser. Um, we bought these big glasses from the dollar store. 
Uh, my glue brush, I keep in a little bit of water. And I have this big um, holder that I put in all my big rulers. I have this desk here is an old Ikea desk. So it's, you know, it's not in great shape. I have my um, craft mat. This is my retired craft mat. I just moved it over. And then I keep my baby wipes. And the napkin backings are good for like uh, just drying off my paintbrushes. And then I have clips tools, adhesives, corner punches, and I have stickies, glue sticks, decorative scissors, sanding implements, extra things for my cutters and whatnot, and I have a little thing that I put my feet on, and Lucy often sits there too. Um, this is a pizza box that I use for spraying the stool here. And then I can put my item in here. And then this is like my spray box, my splat box. A lot cheaper than Tim Holtz's splat box. Uh, this area, I just reorganized my ephemera into um, different sections. A lot of these are things I got in Happy Mail, little bits and pieces. And um, here I'm working on the color of the year project and then I have different um, so just a craft foam thing if I'm doing some stamping different clipboards that I just throw in there here we have more water soluble things I have my magicals infusions gel pens um, alcohol markers so assorted ones these are mostly um, neutrals these are colored these are so these are alcohol markers these are not alcohol markers but they're various markers um, assorted paper pa packs that are just small um, either from stamping up or from the dollar store um, the markers from Crayola color your world markers um, specialty markers so these are metallic ones these are my uh, food and suke, the calligraphy, um, sharpies, pastel pencils, woodless color pencils, which I haven't used yet. <laughs> um, these are all my zig writers that I use mostly for uh, scrapbooking, for doing journaling. So I just threw them all in there. And then I have gelatos, and then I have different art sticks from, uh, I think they're King Art. So that's uh, Home Sense here, we get King Art brand. And then in here I have some Distress crayons and thinner bar waxes. Like I said, I don't, I don't get everything uh, of a brand. I'll get a few things that I, so I can use it and try it out. And if I really love it, I might get more. Um, this is the set of alcohol markers I bought. Um, well, I bought, I got for Christmas. That my husband ordered for me that I ordered and I said, guess what you're getting me for Christmas? Um, so this is, how many in this set? 168 oh, oh hoo, hoo markers. So that's fun. It's in a bag. I can easily pull it down and use it, but I do like to store them horizontally. So that's why I have them up here. It's a little tiny little artwork I did. And then my washi tape storage, I have it mostly by color, except a few things I have by type. So I have these Asian uh, washi tapes. And I bought another organizer because I had bought more washi tapes. So now I have room for even more, um, which gets me to, this is a project that I've been working on off and on. So it's my um, Art Nouveau journal inspired by Dee Dee Willingham. So uh, some of the washi tapes that are gonna go in that container are these ones here. And um, so I have them with this collection of Art Nouveau stuff that I'm gonna be continue to work on. Two-sided tape, extra pens, um, assorted pens I don't use very much because this is further away from my desk. Um, some acrylic blocks, um, some other tapes, that's my and carved stamp, the first one I did. A few little odds and ends, some black ink, some other uh, white Copic ink, some other little paints, and um, some circle shapes that I use. 
for mark making. And then these are some sticker, um, some word stickers and phrases that I have nearby when I'm art journaling. This is my jelly plating um, composition book that I've shown on some of my videos. Um, this is what I'm planning to do my color of the year project and with. So beside my desk, I have this cutter. So it's very handy. It also has a scoring tool. If I don't want to pull out my scoring board, I have this glass mat that I got just at the dollar store and it fits nicely in the little L shape here. Um, and then this is just a fun placemat I got at the dollar store. I just, I don't know, it's just fun. Um, and then here's my some other favorite sticker books I like to have pretty handy. Under my desk, I have the garbage. Um, I have a box that has like packaging in it, a tub that has cardboard and, and other things, vinyl gloves, another spray box. Um, these are items that I bought at the dollar store that I want to use on the jelly plate, but I just haven't had a chance to yet. And then this is my die cutting section. So I have my, my big shot. I have different my different plates. I have my dies and they're not really in order like they're kind of by size of packaging and then kind of um, by alphabet like I'll write the name of it um, and I do transfer when most of my dies are um, stamping up but they aren't all stamping up but I'll put a magnet sheet I'll take them off their little holder and I'll put a magnet sheet in there I'll write the name of the dies and then I'll just put them in. But they, I don't have a lot, so it's not hard to find what I'm looking for. But I have other brands in here um, as well. So, and then these are my embossing folders. Again, I don't have a lot. Um, so I don't have them in any particular order. order. I just kind of leaf through them. And then here's where I keep my magnetic sheets. Um, and then this is the binder I was talking about. So I'll have a sample of the stamps and also the dies. So I have it labeled. So background stamps, and I'll do like samples of it, um, borders and flourishes, postal and tickets, uh, labels, emojis, alphabets and numbers. And then I'll have a system here that says where the stamps are. So for example, this blue means it's a stamping up stamp and it's in a case in the in that cabinet there. And then green means it's in a miscellaneous spot. Um, so then I have stamps, you know, with just words separate, images and sentiments, uh, more like elegant kind of stamps. So for example, this um, Lavinia stamp, I ended up putting it with this stamp set from Stamping Up. So I have a, a little arrow that says it's a blue dot. It's with this set here, so I can just go to my A's. So for example, so I can go to my A section go to amazing silhouettes and then here i have that set there but i also wrote on the side it has the this one in case i'm just browsing through my catalog and then the sample on the back so that's how that works um so these are more um like elegant type and then i have um where is it and then i have a section that's more whimsical so this is more whimsical sets. I'm not going to show you all my stamps. And then we have Christmas. Um, and all of my Christmas stamps are in that container down there with the Christmas stuff, I believe. And then I have um, my dies. So for example, so here's a stamp set. But I also cut out some of the dies, and I have a green heart, meaning that there's dies that coordinate with this set. So if I go to my die cuts here, so here, um, here's my Christmas set of stamps, and it has a green 
um, heart, meaning that there's actually dyes that coordinate. And I did put a little picture of the dyes that coordinate. So we'll see that in here shortly. Um, where's my Christmas? So here's that set, Christmas set there. And then I have a um, catalog of all my embossing folders. And I've kind of highlighted them so that I can get a good sense of them. So that's my organization. Um, so when I get a new set, I photocopy. Now, I, instead of stamping it out, I just photocopy the cover. And I'll make a spot for it in my binder. And then this will go up on my shelf. So I think that's pretty much everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour of my craft room. I should mention that I also have um, a sewing machine, but I don't sew a lot, but I do have it set up in a different room um, so that it's ready to go. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions about any specific areas or you wanna see more details, um, just leave a comment below and I hope you all have fun crafting. Bye.